guest is Dr. Garrett Hardin, Professor Emeritus of Human Ecology at the University of California, Santa Barbara. He's the author of numerous scientific and popular works. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Why do you consider the world and even the United States overpopulated? Because if in imagination you think of the population suddenly decreasing by, say, 10 percent painlessly, I think you'll find many things will immediately be much better. Less traffic congestion, uh, less stress in general, more food per person and so on. Perhaps less pollution, fewer Indeed. crimes. Indeed, yes. So you're saying that the major social crises that we have are really due to too many people. Well, I would say that they're made worse by the number of people. They're due to many things, but they're made worse by excess population. How do we solve that? Well, uh, we have to first of all convince people that they don't have to have a large number of children to be happy. This is an educational process. And maybe we can also uh, perhaps jimmy the tax structure so as to f favor people who have fewer children. This is a possibility. Government policy generally ignores population as a problem. Or, worse yet, many governments actually try to encourage the production of more people. This is partly a leftover from earlier days when cannon fodder meant strength. The more young people you had, the more uh, army, the larger the army that you had, and the better off you were. This is no longer true. You're advocating a total value change then? That's right, yes. And I think it's just one of many real value changes we have to, that have to take place in modern times. More people does not necessarily mean a bigger, stronger nation, a bigger, stronger populace. That's right. Think, for example, of a country like China. If China, if their population suddenly doubled, there would be no sense in which they'd be a threat to the rest of the world. Whereas if their population suddenly were cut in half, then they might be, because there would be more resources per person. We have to discuss this resource people issue, because a lot of people say there are plenty of resources. There is plenty of food for everyone. Oh, there's plenty of food. That's not the problem. But think instead in terms, for instance, the United States. Just think of uh, all the problems uh, that come from having people too crowded. Think of the amount of time that people spend commuting. If you have more people, you're not going to be able to uh, remedy, remedy that. You build more highways, but things don't get better. They get worse. When you say there is plenty of food, you're assuming that the population is stable. Uh, well, in a sense, but there's more than enough food, and you can argue that it's a matter of distribution. That isn't where the problem is now. It's in uh, congestion and in pollution. And the more people you have, the more pollution you have. See, that won't get better. But we can make more food, but we cannot make more space to absorb the pollutants. Aren't we using 40% of all our land for human consumption now? Oh, I don't know what the percentage is. You see, the percent of our land that is uh, farmland is only about seven to nine percent. Uh, most of our, our land, and this is true for most countries, is not farmland uh, and shouldn't be. Aren't we using 40 percent of all our land for human consumption now? Well, think of uh, the states like Utah, Arizona, uh, Montana, and so on. How much of that land is farmable? Very little of it. That's all right. Uh, but we still have enough to produce all the food we need and enough to export a great deal of food. Food is not the problem, but the pollution area for absorbing pollution is severely limited and we're having more and more trouble getting rid of our pollutants. Isn't it also the use of non-renewable resources? Yes, uh, though that, what that comes down to eventually is energy. For example, uh, we the minerals are non-renewable in a sense, but in another sense you can get them back. You can uh, harvest uh, your dumps and get copper and iron back, but it'll cost you a lot of energy. So we're not going to run out of copper or iron, but it'll take more and more energy to get it back into shape, to recycle it. Depends on what kind of energy we use. Energy is going to be limiting in any case. Coal and oil are being exploded at such a rate that in about 200 years there might not be any left. That's right. And so we'll have to come down to using solar energy, which uh, can work very well. Again, it's limited. As after all, the sun only shines so brightly every day it can't shine brighter. 
but we have a lot there, but it'll take a tremendous capital investment to gather that solar energy so that we can use it. People often say that there's plenty of land out there for more people, but are we able to sustain more people? Water, yeah. especially. Yes, that's certainly true. Yes, and the, and the water, again, that comes back to energy. We've got plenty of water in the ocean. We can desalinate the ocean, but it takes a tremendous amount of energy to desalinate. So again, we come back to energy as the prime limiting factor. If we switch totally to solar energy, would we be able to have an increased population? Well, you can figure that out, uh, which I can't do offhand. Sure, it could be uh, more than we have now. But remember, if you change entirely to solar energy, it means a fair share of your land area will be covered up by solar collectors, which means you can't use it for some other purpose. I mean, the deserts, for example, would be fine places to put solar collectors. That means you can't have them for recreation areas. And they're beautiful left natural right now. That's right. They won't be beautiful by the time they get covered with solar collectors. So we're trading off aesthetics for That's a standard right. of living. That's right. And but aesthetics are part of the standards of living. So this, this is the sort of thing we have to face, is realize we can't have everything we want, can't have all the goodies simultaneously. We trade one for another. We can't have them all together. What would be your vision of a world that is ecological? Well, uh, see, there you get into matter of personal taste and personal prejudices. It happens that I like uh, sort of essentially outdoors and rural sort of environments. I wouldn't be happy living in uh, Manhattan. I've been there frequently and so on, but I don't want to live there. I don't think anybody should live there. But there are many people who are petrified when they get out in a wilderness area. They think, oh, what a terrible place to be. Uh, so there are differences of opinion, but I suppose what one has to say in general is we ought to have the option of wilderness areas and wild areas for those people who want it. And the more population we have, the greater the population, the smaller percentage can even have that option. What is the actual carrying capacity of the land? The carrying capacity has to be determined by your standard of living. This is why I often speak of the cultural carrying capacity. And I can put this easiest, at least easiest to see in terms of energy. Uh, it takes about 2,300 calories per person per day just to live. Nothing more than live and do a mild amount of work, but not have anything else to speak of. Americans, as a matter of fact, use 100 times that much, 100 times 2,300, 230,000 kilocalories per person per day. These extra calories are used for heat, light, el electricity, clothing, automobiles, cameras, movies, radio, television, all these things, roads, building roads, take, repairing them and so on. All these other uses. Well, if we give up many of those uses, then the carrying capacity increases. In other words, the more cultural riches we have, the lower the carrying capacity. So this is a trade-off thing. There's no way of answering what the carrying capacity of the United States is unless you specify what quality of life you have in mind. The higher the quality, materialistically speaking, the higher the quality, the lower the carrying capacity. Nobody wants to go back in time. Most people enjoy the current standard of living that they are enjoying. So let's take today's standard. Well, on today's standard, obviously Americans are living on it. I mean, the average American has an average uh, American style of life. Uh, but uh, not all Americans live that well, and some of the ones who are living below that standard would like to climb up to it. Well, if they do, and there isn't simply a change of places, uh, then uh, somebody's going to have to move over, or we're going to have to have, find more energy someplace. I'd like to thank you very much for sharing with us some of your concerns about well, this major problem. I'm glad to do it, and if I've upset you, fine.